Bam, Shamalam, Dam, Whammo. Welcome to the Cube Gaming. This is a sponsored episode today. This is your boy Halo Spades, and we're here, as you can see, to get real magical. So, I got a chance to participate in the pre release, um, and I'll have videos of that uploaded soon. And I opened up some pretty good stuff and uh, was very happy. Uh, went okay, my record wasn't the greatest, but you know, new cards, new stuff, new set. So, I got one of the cards I was hoping for. That's always a good, good thing. So, thank you for coming by the channel and joining us today while we open these packs for your delight. Any cards in particular, any type of decks you guys want to build, you're just going to wait for this format to settle down like the Wild Wild West, because that's what it is right now is the Wild West. No Okos. Thank God. But we still got Teferi, so have fun with that. Or are you, are you going to brew stuff up? I'm, I'm already working on some ideas. I've already got a couple ideas that I liked. Um, it's kind of an, an improvement to one of the current decks but it's not just technical knights it's more about are these japanese packs oh they're japanese so what we'll do is we'll try to all right we got commons try to build that suspense right we have phalanx tactics hey it's gary great for limited great for standard too and pioneer clothis design Yay, two bucks. Whoa, that is pack number one, and we already started the show off right, folks. That was the first pack, and here we are pulling some great stuff. So let's separate stuff so it doesn't look like a mess here. Put rares here, commons and uncommons, and lands and tokens next to the lands. So, the, so Japanese packs, you have to kind of do this with them, but not like that because that was kind of an epic fail mainly because I'm scared of damaging cards alrighty then so let's get to the uncommons minimize prophecy dream stalker manticore fairies band brawler a 4-4 four, four for 6, and has removal on a body. Pretty good for limited. Whoa! Alt Art God. Man, this box is stellar already. Literally stellar, but... Wow, folks. We are hitting the lotto already. Yeah, so the deck I'm kind of working on is the, the Mardu Hushbringer, mainly because I like that Titan, the red-black one. I think it's Croxus or Croxas. Crox, I don't know how to say his name, so don't, don't beat me up for it. Field of Ruin. Welcome back, buddy. Maybe they might unban Field of the Dead. Who knows? I hope not. Meyer Triton. Enter the battlefield of top two cards of your library into your graveyard, and you gain two life. Well, there's going to be a lot of Graveyard Matters decks going on now, so this may see a lot of play. Good for limited to death touch on a body. Archon of Falling Stars. Very good limited, mainly because of the evasion. You know, that's just me. And we have a team that calls the dead. Can't all be great, but could find a home. Whoa. Look at that. If you haven't seen one yet, those are sexy. Those are some sexy, sexy sexy cards there oh man this is crazy so I don't know any of the values of these yet so eventually I'll probably post them here or something or you'll see them eventually but uh, I always recommend me personally I'm not against buying boxes always support your LGS folks support them because without them where are you gonna play magic at I know a lot of you are gonna say well I play on the kitchen table well that's nice and all, but there's a lot of people that don't play on the kitchen table. Metamized Prophecy. 
Alcide of Life's Bounty. Pretty good, actually. I think good for limited. Kind of like a pseudo God's Willing. And Daxos, alt art. Man, these alt arts are amazing. Whoa. Look at this. Look at this. This is this is bananas. This is unreal. Also, if you guys like what you see here, take a moment to give it a like. Subscribe if you can. It's free, by the way. It's free to do that. It will not cost you anything to subscribe. And share it with your friends. Because remember, we like magic and memes here. And all other types of nerd stuff. So you'll see other stuff other than just magic. But most of the, mostly magic. Reverend Hoplite. It's pretty good in the right build in the, for limited. I don't know about standard, but you know. Nessian Wanderer. Mm, not bad. I mean, it's a 1-3 for 2. You can't really go bad. Whoa, the sought-after card. Or this highly speculated card. All right, I'm opening these all wrong. I have no idea what the heck I'm doing here. I'm just super excited about this. Oh, and here we are. We're going to keep torment you guys. We're not here to go straight to the... Come on, you got you to gotta, you gotta work your way in there, buddy. You can't just uh, be... Shoal Kraken. Nothing wrong with that. Escape Velocity. So what kind of limited decks have you been seeing, have been having luck in where you play at? All right, Red's got a board wipe, so jet, make Jeskai a thing again, I guess. Or not that it isn't already a thing, because you got, you know, Jeskai fires. But I'm sure that'll slot in perfectly. They'll probably also run, they'll probably just run the, the, the board wipe, you know, the shatter the sky. All right, it's time to keep teasing you guys. And we're there. All right, we got Soul Guide Lantern. Enters the battlefield. Exile target card from a graveyard. Not bad. Very good. More than likely, he's going to see sideboard play. Very good for limited, depending on, you know, sideboard again. The birth of Miletus, because control needed more stuff to keep them alive. Caliphy, beloved of the sea. Good way to tax your opponents. And Gravebreaker Lamia. When answers the battlefield, search your library for a card. Put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Well, that is pretty good if you ask me. That is definitely pack one, pick one. Pack one, pick one. Did I say it right? Um, just correct me in the comments or whatever. You just say, yeah, you're messing it up. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not against them advertising. But these things kind of bother me. Like, no table required arena. Okay, that's cool. Does allow in-game purchases. But then on this side, it's same thing again. And what I think they should do, and again, I'm an, I'm an older player, so I know about all the mechanics and stuff like that. But I think they should just write down the mechanics that are in each set. If they don't want to put it on the, you know, the text. Like, for example, um, there's that, uh, that three-mana enchantment, so the first Iron games. It says create a gold token. Now, if you don't, didn't play with uh, gold or artif gold artifacts, let's say the original Theros block, you wouldn't know what a gold token was. And it doesn't say you sacrifice this artifact at one mana of any color, right? But then they have a token in here, which we haven't come across it yet, I don't think. No, we haven't. But if we do, I'll show it to you guys. And it says sack this for, you know, any color. But what do we get? We get filler. We get nonsense. This is, this is crap. Okay, I, again, I'm not against advertising because, heck, I advertise myself too, but... Come on, people. Let's get serious here. Let's let's be a little bit more effective. And that's what we're about. All right. We have what's cracking. What's cracking? We're what's cracking. Cracking packs, that is. 
All right. Sorry for the dad jokes. Again, beat me up in the comments. Or be nice. All right. See God scorn. Not bad. Limited, but... Probably going to see play. I think this is going to see standard play. I could be mistaken. I could be wrong. I don't know. Again, I, I don't know how to make meta calls. I, I just know I like what kind of decks I like to play, and that's all it is to it. I don't think that's bad at all. I think that's limited. Well, would you look at that? You get the Kraken. Not with the Kraken. Okay, never mind. I spoke too soon. This is for that uh, Cure of Best of Sea God, which is seeing a lot of hype right now. Hype beast that up. Um, but this is... This thing's get, this gets out of hand real quick. Kill it if you see it in limited. Kill it immediately. This is definitely pack one, pick one pickable for all you guys that care about limited. But uh, it's probably standard playable too, to be honest with you, because there's a lot of like to draw cards a lot decks, and that matters. So there's always that. And thank you guys for joining me. I am not going to let the fact that these are Japanese packs. Sting and Lionfish. The artwork on this is so beautiful. Just look at that. I wonder what it looks like in foil. Oh, yeah. This is definitely something you could not pack one, pick one, but somewhere in your packs you could pick this because, you know, it's a one, two for one. Probably standard playable because the escape is pretty good. It comes in as a... I'm not good at math, so bear with me. Because 3 plus 1 plus 1 is kind of... So it becomes a 4-5. I don't think that's bad. Not bad at all. This is definitely good for limited. Like, my goodness. They destroyed your creature, and they got rid of your enchantment, or they countered it. Well, hey, get them back. Labyrinth of Scophos. Let me tell you, this card did a lot of work for me in limited. It's... Very standard playable in my personal opinion, mainly for control because they could just keep controlling you from attacking. Especially if you're going to be a mid-range deck with one big creature or, yeah, one big creature or something. But then they're going to Teferi bounce you or then they're going to just do this and just, you know, stay alive long enough to, you know, get their end game, sadly. Ooh, these are, look at that. These, these foils are really pretty. See, I'm a foil person, so... A lot of people complain about that. All right. Are you guys looking forward to the next standard? Are you guys looking forward to the next set? That's what I'm curious about. All right, here we go again. I didn't count because normally I count once. If you get nine commons, then there's a chance that you have a foil. Double strike when an enchantment happens. X is your devotion to blue. Well, that's pretty good, pretty playable. I think even Pioneer playable mainly because it's got Flash. They're mono blue. They got the Tempest Gin or whatever it's called. I forget what it was named. They got so many ways for that devotion to really just out-temple you, you know. Very good card for limited. Yeah, this, is, this is just bananas, especially for go-wide decks. Ash Yox Eraser, probably going to see lots of sideboard play. And just to be honest with you, just because of the fact that there's Dovin's Vetoes and th there's Dot Erasers. There's so many things that people are going to want to hit with this. So just just pretty good card altogether. I think the stats line up well enough, I think. Again, I'm not a pro. I'm not someone that knows and wants to attempt to assume that I know what I'm talking about. I'm just a guy that I, I read cards and try to get, try to, I mean, try to figure out if they're good or not. I mean, you're talking to a guy that thought Oath of Vajani was going to be a decent card, but guess what? Never saw any play. But I still think it's a good card. I won't ever say it's not a good card. All right, here we are. We're at the Uncommons. Elspeth's Nightmare. Now, there was a lot of talk that that was a Phyrexian, and I have no idea because I wasn't around during that time. I got in during the OG Theros. But I saw the card that this was supposed to be, uh, I think it's Phyrexian Obliterator. And it looked real similar to that. So I got to say that I'm 
I wonder what's going to happen with that. I wonder if we're going to see Phyrexians in the near future. Nice. I wonder. I want to know the story behind all these cards, to be honest with you. I, I kind of wish they gave us the stories again instead of, you know, whatever they're doing now with the stories. Like, I was sad when they didn't include the, uh, you know, the little booklets that used to come with the bundles. Oh, boy. There's this card again. This card is going to be the bane of all aggro players' nightmares. This card right here. Outside of a board wipe, you're not going to be in a good spot. I mean, yeah, they could, you know, because of the discard of card ability. I mean, yeah, it gains hexproof and stuff, and yeah, you've won up them. But you can't attack, so if they, you know, pre-combat, let's say, Murderous Rider it or something, or Assassin's Trophy, and then they go, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and discard this island. Boop. Now they can't attack with it. So it's kind of good, not kind of good, but chances are they'll probably have a counter spell too to back it up. So prepare yourself to run into this card a lot. Oh, did I put it in the wrong pile? Yes, I did. I was just, you know, that card is kind of exciting. I mean, I've seen some decks already doing work. Esper Hero, welcome back to Standard, buddy. Oh, cool. That looks like uh, that uh, that dog from Oni, or what was that? I forget what it was called, but you know what I'm talking about. It's that Capcom game, Amaratsu, or... Uh, I haven't played it. I just only know that character from uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <sighs> okay. All right, we're back here again. Heliod's Punishment, I think it's pretty good. If you're beating somebody down and you're out valoring them or you're very aggressive, this is good to keep them from, uh, you know, doing stuff. It's not bad for a one drop. Yeah, pretty good. Go wide strategies are always. Look at this. Wow, that's a card for you. This is going to be annoying, too. Thank goodness for Vanishing Light, which we've not seen, actually. Ugh, I miss opening American packs, I'm not going to lie. They have a different, because these are a little bit looser than American packs, too. I was kind of hoping for this set to give us some reprints, like, um, like, like, first and foremost, I wanted to go with, with Nick those, because you know I love Pioneer, I'm, I absolutely love that format. However, I don't like how expensive that card is, and there has been rumors that it may get banned, sadly. So that's why I haven't plunked any money into it yet, and they didn't reprint it in this set. So sad face. And if not even that, I was hoping for a, hoping for a um, mana confluence. There we go. All right, here's the card I was actually talking about. See how it says create a gold token? It doesn't say what that gold token does. Outside of the fact that this is the most mean and talked about card in the, in the set right now, because in the other card of Rowan's something, I forgot which, which card it is. I know it's a card that says that they don't award medals, and here they are awarding a medal. So, but that's what I'm saying, like these cards here, these trash cards that are doing nothing, could it actually mention what that does, or like, uh, for example, during the Amonkhet block, there was a card called Soul Scar Mage. A lot of you may know that card, and a lot of you may hate that card. A lot of you newer players may not know what that card is. So what it, that was, is that was a one red mana, it was a one two, and it said Prowess on it. Now again, I know what Prowess does, a lot of mostly most players know what prowess was but let's say that that was a new player's first set right and they play with this card they pick it up and they play with it and they have no idea what prowess is they what's prowess and they don't put it in the right build or something you know it just it just be effective that's, just, that's all i'm saying you can still advertise but just you know think of the players all right Probably good for limited, I think. Especially if you're getting beat down and you need to gain life or something. And you could draw a card. Yeah, not good. Not bad at all. It's, uh, it's, it gives you a benefit. It's already passed the vanilla test. And we got regular Daxos. 
Oh yeah, this is going to be, ooh. I am super excited about this card. Hey, it's a fairy coming down on turn three. Guess what you can't do? Bounce it. I'm okay with that. And here's the foil. That card is so playable, by the way. <clears throat> All right, we're about halfway through the box, I think it looks like. We come across a gold token. I hope I remember to talk to you about that because, again, that's really important. Okay, we're back to the uncommons. Underworld fires. Not bad. I mean, in limited, if you let's say you dealt enough damage to something and you don't want it to recur, for example, and you just finish it off with this and after combat. We already talked about that. I think not too bad. I don't. I would. I don't know if I would want to slot it in in these colors. Eat to extinction. Look at this art, by the way. This is by Vincent Proach, and I don't know if I'm saying his name right. So forgive me if he ends up watching this. But I love his art, and like I didn't notice this before, but in the eyes, it's a mouth. And, and there's mouths everywhere. I don't know if you can see that, but there's mouths everywhere, and it's kind of creepy. That's what I like about his artwork. He, he's, even on his lands, they're pretty creepy, you know? Like, he did the blue-black lands, the shadow hands, shadow lands, or whatever they're called. Oh, boy. So, uh, one of the players that I follow on Twitter was talking about, uh, and by the way, you can connect with me on Twitter. You could make suggestions. You could talk to me there, communicate. Uh, wants to make themselves become a te ten uh, tentacle token. That's a mouthful. Tentacle token. Tentacle little. I can't, I, can't, I can't even say it three times fast. From the SEG tour. Because if you win the SEG tour on uh, an open or something, they make you into a token of your choice. <coughs> Excuse me. Pretty cool, though, and that's what I like about those a little bit better than the GPs. You know, give us back coverage, and then they gave us coverage again, but it was for Modern, and Modern is not really a popular thing right now. I don't know how to evaluate this card, but I think it might be good. I probably didn't. I had it in my pool, and I didn't play it. This card has actually helped me out a lot in Limited. Like, it, you got a problem some creature beating you down? Well, keep them out of the way, you know? And keep your life high. That's actually pretty decent. It's a two-two. Just the stats alone is pretty good. But the fact that you have a, it has an upside to it. I don't see anything wrong with that card. And there it is. Controls new friend. You might run Gideon's because of this. Just because of this, they'll just main board wipe everything, and draw a card. Not that they'd want to draw a card, you know, against like have their opponents drawing cards. No one ever wants their opponent drawing cards. But then again, you could also play with Narset too, which hoses people from drawing cards. Hey, would you look at that? We got to the gold. All right. So we got to the gold. And let's go ahead and... We're back here. Create a gold token. Right? And now we have gold token. Does it say anywhere to sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color? Nope. So let's say you didn't get this in your pools or you don't draft this at all. And you don't, and let's say you drafted this card and you're a new player. Would you even know that what that does? Absolutely not. And that's, again, if you're watching Wizards, pay attention. Take heed. All right, let's get back to it, folks. All right. Wow, look at that. Pseudo-heroic is what I call that. That is fantastic. No, no, and no. Escape velocity. Don't see that being good. Erebos is intervention. Not bad. Good for control. Good for Hano Black. Um, mainly because... You have two options. You can remove a creature, or if you're playing against a Graveyard Matters deck, there you go. And we got a Foil Plummet.
Bad. This has not been a bad box, I gotta say. Alright, you guys can beat me up later. I know it's coming. A quick creature gets plus zero and plus two and has hex proof. Whenever a creature with death touch blocks or becomes blocked by this creature, destroy that creature. Okay. Oh, look, I did it again. You put it in the wrong pile, you idiot. Look at these cards. Wow. Additional plus one. Yeah, I don't see why Green wouldn't want to play this. Mischievous Chimera. Flying 2 2. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, Mischievous Chimera deals one damage to each opponent. Scry one. All right. Looks like uh, Is it might have some more fun again. Underworld Breach. This is the most hyped card that everyone keeps trying to build around for legacy and modern type of stuff. And apparently there's some type of combo. I don't know what it is. You have to forgive me on that. I don't know that much of the eternal formats except for Pioneer and Modern. That's in Modern's 91 of my favorites. And there we go. We got a shiny star boy. Man, this box has been really nice. No, uh, Groxas or Hee Hee. It's K R O X A S, and I don't know how to pronounce that. That's not typical. All right, here we are. Back to the uncommons. Inevitable end. Removal for limited is really light in this set, I gotta say. It's mostly enchantment based stuff, so there's a lot of enchantment matters stuff in this set, I think. Oh, that's going to be playable. Very, very playable. Definitely good in, uh, you know, those uh, Curious uh, Obsession, I think that card was. The one mana draw card, but it has to attack, or if not sacrifice. This is probably going to go in those type of decks, too. You know, with Shram and... Oh, yeah. This card, everyone's hyping up, too. And it's actually been seen play in the Heroes of uh, Precinct 1 decks. Because you get card draw, you get a card out of this, and you have a menace creature. Like, who does not like that? Like, come on now. Yeah, your opponent might play mind games, but it's whatever. It's the name of the game, right? You want you, you have more advantage. They don't. And then they got to deal with that too, as well as if you had a hero of precinct one out, you got to deal with that and the cast effect from hero. Limbs of freedom. I don't know. Draw a card at instant speed, and then you can do it again. Not bad, I guess. Opt is better. Blood Aspirants. Okay, so he gets bigger. Oh, I had to check this card so many times. This card almost killed me in a pre-release. Whoa, this guy is hype beast right here. Oh, I he is definitely going into those ramp decks because, one, he's an elemental. Two, he, with him and Nissa out, you're going to have some big, big flying hydroid crisis. This is, wow. How many mythics have we got so far? One. Two. Three, four, five. Five already. And they're not bad ones either. Except maybe Calyx, but I don't know if that guy is good or not. Could be wrong. He, he beat my butt in Limited. Well, he was trying to beat my butt. All right. One with the stars. Pretty good. Pretty good card. Very good for Limited. This is actually going to be, this is actually one of my favorite cards that I'm looking forward to having because of the creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. Uh, works good for me, especially for Pioneer because, you know, Prowling Serpent part is pretty good, but it's also one more mana. And that one says can't be countered, whereas this comes out on a turn earlier, which I think is better. Very good for limited. Very good. Not a smuggler's copter. Would you look at the, Wow. Wow, just this is mythic central. Like now, everyone's saying that this card was bad, but this card is actually really good. And 
personal opinion and from articles that I read about this card, this card is very, very good. <laughs> this box is, wow. I, oh, we got trash card again. Is that a spawn of ma'am? It does look like a spawn of ma'am and he's wearing shorts. Okay, good job, buddy, you're wearing shorts. Never seen a demon wear shorts before, but okay. All right, because Mill needed some more toys to play with. This is actually pretty good. Good for limited, at least. This is the Golgari Fine Broker everyone was talking about. Because, you know, box openings won't be a box opening without, you know, your run-of-the-mill $2 land. But Control has more more viability now. Like I said, it, it had viability. It had some legs before this set came out. But now it definitely has legs. It has ways to fix your colors. It has ways to... Because, you know, you couldn't do Othakaya and Narset in the same deck. You know what I mean? It, it just it felt bad. Again, I don't know much about Control. I'm very anti-Control. If you guys know me, I am super... Uh, but again, you gotta respect what people like to play, you know? If that's what they wanna play, then you, you can't knock them for that. Magic is about what you wanna play, and that's what I like about this game. Message! Nice. Laguna Band Storyteller. Annex Hardened in the Forge. Utropia, the Twice Favored. I think it's pretty good. And plus, you got Civic Ascendancy, that card that, uh, you know, whenever you put a counter on something, got 20 or more. Your Crow in War. Here we've got you can control its target creature for as long as the Rukron War remains on the battlefield. Might be something good and saucy that goes into uh, those sacrifice decks. Because now you have something for two, two more turns, you know, that you can just, you know, beat them with their own creature. And if you want, you can sack it. So it's pseudo removal. So probably going to be playable in those, in those decks. I mean, you don't want to increase the curve any higher than it needs to be. And there's the foil rare. The first Iron Games. I think it's pretty decent. And the artist, Noah Bradley, he's he's a damn good artist. I love his artwork. I absolutely love his lands. Alright, so we're not too far. We got several plaques left, so we're pulling pretty good stuff so far, so I don't see anything going wrong from here. I mean it could go downhill. You know, next thing you know, we'll probably get a Pelucranos or something. Or a foil Pelucranos, or a full art Pelucranos. Didn't know how to evaluate that card, to be honest with you. I mean, I like the first art Pelucranos. I thought that was pretty cool. But the fact that he's a zombie now is even funnier. All right. Good for Mill. So, probably again, there's, there's Mill decks been running around lately in Standard. Enemy of Enlightenment. Gets... Minus one, minus one for each card in your opponent's hands. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. Nice. Probably good for limited, but not so great. This is life gain. Didn't play it at all. <sighs> I don't know what to say about this card. It's a blue card. And red card. For artifacts. I mean, I could be wrong. Again, I'm probably misevaluating that card. It's, for one, it's a 2 4 for three. It adds two mana. The cast artifact spells or activated builds of artifacts could go with an Embercleave deck, you know. And there's also Crackling Drake that's still a problem. You can equip it. Equipped creatures you control have flying in haste. Flying in haste? Yeah, you can't really beat that. I mean, not that Crackling Drake needs help with flying, but. Haste, on the other hand, is a different story. I feel like haste is a very important keyword right now with the way the meta is starting to shape up. Dawn Evangel. If a creature, whenever a creature dies, if an aura you control is attached to it, return to our creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Maybe might see playing Bogles, but again, don't take my word for it. There it is. Very good card for limited, very good card for for standard. I don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah. 
Nice. That's his oracle. People have been building around this. That's been people's win cons, actually. Alrighty then. Let's uh, take a quick. We're almost done, folks. We just got one more stack left. Thank you for bearing with me here. Right, we're at the uncommon slot. Cling to dust. We already talked about that. Gary. Now, there's a meme going around saying that you can't call him Gary unless you played an OG Theros. You can call him whatever you like, but he's Gary to me because that's when I first got to playing the game. Triumph of Annex, we talked about that. Arasta, or I call that Arasta. Pretty good. Went to town on me yesterday, and I couldn't attack anymore with my 2 1 Harpy. That's always fun, right? Your turn three harpy, and then that comes down on turn four. That's always fun and limited. But I didn't even get to attack with my harpy. I wanted to just beat your face in. No, you don't get to beat my face in. And then if you use an instant or sorcery, ha, I get a one two. That could block your harpy. All right, we're back to the uncommons. I don't know why they do this in Japan. Whoa. Alert, alert, we knocked cards over. The Binding of the Titans. So we're missing a Titan, to be honest with you. If, you. if you look at this right here, it shows in the artwork, it has three different Titans. It has the Croxus, and then they have Euro, and they have a third one back there, which we don't even know who it is, so... We probably might get this in the next set, and maybe Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths. Don't know. Did it again. But we'll see. But it definitely wasn't spoiled. Iliad's Intervention. Very good card. Probably even main boardable with the way things are shaping up in this set. Yeah, these are lo looser than your typical American packs. Again, I don't know why they do it this way. But again, they also read a certain way too. Like I think we read from left to right. They read from right to left. Or I don't know. Again, I don't know much, much about Japanese culture. I just know I like it. And you got to respect people that are, you know, doing uh, anime for us. So thank you for that. Timurit. I remember trying to build a deck with him once. Back in the original standard, he was red and black at the time. And Temple of Malice, because aggro decks love tap lands. But maybe Grixis. So pick up your Nickel Boluses immediately, because Grixis might might be a, a actual meta deck. But don't quote me on that. Because that card does it all. All right. Feel the Ruin. We'd love to see that in foil, by the way. This card. Pick them up as soon as you can. This is a damn good card. Very, very playable. Pair it off with Plague Crafter, by the way. That's always fun to your opponents, right? What's your opinion on the lands, by the way, guys? Uh, I, a lot of people didn't like the lands. I absolutely loved them when I saw them. I, I loved them even more when I saw them in foil. All right, trash card. Or, since I speak Spanish, basura. All right, Heliod's Punishment. Let's try to make some space so I don't knock the cards over again. All right. Not bad, if you ask me. Very, very playable. It's a two-mana flyer with that, uh, if you have Enchantment Matters, so Dreadhorde Invasions or something. Or some other way of having enchantments in your graveyard. This this would make you an army. I don't see anything wrong with that. Chain to memory. Very good limited removal for blue. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm getting better at opening the packs, I gotta say. There we are. Minions return. It's not bad, actually. For limited, of course. This is actually really good for limited, so it fixes your mana. And late game, it also creates, you know, a wolf for you if you need to. If you could get this to get online, very good. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. Eh, because blue doesn't like drawing cards, apparently. All right. Getting down to the home stretch. Kunaros. I don't remember what the... This... Oh, what was the three-headed dog's name again? I love Greek mythology. That's what one thing that drew, drew me to magic was this set. Because I love Greek mythology, but I can't remember that. Cerebus. Is this Cerebus? C-E-R-E-B-U-S? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. A lot of brewers are going to have fun with this card. Beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1, plus the sacrifice enchantment's converted mana cost. Put that card into the battlefield and shuffle your library. Put it onto the battlefield. So you could turn a two mana enchantment into a euro. Euro, euro, euro. A Rastaman. Hey, that actually kind of looks like a predator. See the mouth right there? It looks like predator's mouth. And predator had dreads, and this thing's called a Rasta. Go figure. I wonder if those two are connected somehow. I wonder who this guy is in Greek mythology. If you guys know, just go ahead and comment. I, I'm unfamiliar with who he's supposed to represent. That's actually a pretty good card, in my opinion. A lot of people are speculating on it. Attacks or blocks. And then if you have, you know, I, I mean, it's probably a little too top-heavy if you have this and Torbrin in your deck. But this with Torbrin is just, it's phenomenal. This is whenever Tectonic Giant attacks or becomes a target of a spell an opponent controls, choose one. Tectonic Giant deals three damage to each opponent. Never bad. Which it becomes five damage with Torbrin, or you can get light up the stage on it. Exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. What does an aggro deck need? Card advantage. There it is on a body. And if they don't have an answer for it, guess what? You're beating face. You're doing six a turn just by itself, not pairing it off with Torbrin. You you know you got. Six damage coming off of that. Or if you need to do a crazy attack, just to try to get an answer for the field or something. Does that. Drag to the Underworld, I think, is going to be good for the mono black decks. Maybe even for, for Pioneer. This card. This card. Um, okay, so if you guys know me, and again, if you follow the channel, you see that, and if you see most of my matches, I play mostly aggressive cards. Everyone's like, oh, this is an aggressive card. And, and you know what? Hack those is a hack. Don't, don't buy into the hype. If you get them to work, then uh, more power to you. But other than that, this card is not good. It is a trap. Stay away from it. Again, if you can get this to work, cool beans, bro. But he is a trap. Slaughter Priest of Mogus. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, Slaughter Priest of Mogus gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Because the cat deck needed some help. Two, sacrifice another creature or an enchantment. Slaughter Priest of Mogus gains first strike until end of turn. Sure. Hey, cat, you want to die? Bring it back with some food. So, uh, I mean, I'm not against that because I, those are the kind of colors I like to play. But uh, a lot of people are so upset with that cat oven combo. They're like, every time they see that cat, they get mad. It's like, it's like they get triggered. Oh, no. Did we do that? Or did it come in like that? All right. Hydra's growth. 
I kind of want to play with this in Pioneer, but again, it's too slow. And with Teferi's running around. Hey, it's a non-foil brother. Hey, I pulled one of these myself yesterday. Probably going to help with the combo that people don't want to talk about in, in uh, Pioneer. You know, the reason why everyone's like, Whoa, this is going to get Walking Ballista banned. Well, luckily, I kept my Walking Ballistas, by the way. Look at this artwork. How creepy. This is the card everyone's looking forward to is the uh, Ashiok. And I got to admit, it's a pretty good card. And I don't like blue, but it makes me want to play blue. All right, we're on the last pack. Are we going to find the Ashiok? No, yes, maybe. Huh? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Well, got to open it up to find out, don't we? Hey, there's the elemental with trample and haste. All right. Commanding presence. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has first strike. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, create a one-one white human soldier creature token. It's very good for limited. This I think is a fun card. I also feel like maybe it can work in mono black. I don't know. Again, I think it's good. This would probably be good in sideboard against your, you know, your control players that want to draw cards or any deck that is drawing a bunch of cards like the Edgewa Innkeeper decks. Something you might want to consider. Careless Celebrants, whenever it dies. That, this card is actually really good for limited. Probably even good for standard, my opinion, or for mono red. Pioneer. Uh, again, if I talk about mostly Pioneer and Standard, because those are the ones I, I mostly play, or Limited. Temple of Deceit. Yay, because Control needed their mana fixing back again. That's it, folks. That's all we got. So let's review. If you, any of you folks that fast-forwarded to the end of the video because you want to cheat. We have this card. We pulled that card. I like a like. Sad face. So let's take a look at all the cards. We'll not keep it too slow, but we'll just keep going through them. Oh, oh, oh. Because it's blue, so we can't really celebrate it. We don't celebrate blue here. Just a kitten. Blue's nice. Yay, control hosers, because we need as many of those we can get. Hose them, hose them, hose them. Woo, woo. <sighs> I wonder if Sorcerer's Spy, Sorcerer Spy Glass deals with this, but I could be mistaken. I actually pre-ordered these because I think it might be, I, I could be mis-evaluating it, but it might be really good. Yes. Love those. Sneak attack, huh? No, know if Fred could get away with that. All right, well, again, thank you guys for joining me. This is your boy, Halo Spades. And don't forget to, if you liked it, what you see here, make sure to subscribe, ring that notification bell so you know of any new videos that come out. I do post every week. I post uh, matches here from our local game shop here at Double Dane Games. I also uh, do Twitch as well, too. Uh, I'm going to work on getting our games live streamed so you can catch them live. Uh, we may not be able to respond because I'm the one that does all that. And uh, I can't be looking at someone's hand while, you know, I'm playing a game of magic. That's kind of not cool. Unless I'm, you know, using like duresses or something. But again, thank you guys for joining me. We'll catch you in the next time. Peace out, A-Town.